beautiful day, not a cloud in the sky. As far as the eye can see, there were just people. It just blew everybody away. We had no idea there would be 250,000 people there. Mothers with babies and strollers, church women with their church hats and, and pocketbooks and fancy shoes. and It was uh, walking down the street like you were moving as part of a glacier. At that time, the largest assemblage of people in one spot in the history of the United States. I had no expectation that I was preparing to step into uh, an event that was going to transform my entire life. To be face to face and side by side with people who had made decisions to go up in the face of the police state atmosphere of the Deep South in order to get change uh, was an overwhelming thought to me. What I was looking for was the spirit, what uh, Dr. King called the beloved community. We had never worked on anything of that magnitude. Finally, there was going to be a coalition of, of the civil rights groups, which is what we had been hoping for for many years. We had a sense that we had slogged through some very terrible things. It, when, in a way, there was a huge release on that day. I think there's sometimes when you know something is going to be historic. I remember it was hot. I remember what I was wearing. I remember singing. And I remember that ocean of people. I've never seen anything like it. I remember the electricity in the air. A tree of life. Music had become the uh, soundtrack of the American conscience, and particularly folk music, more than, more than anything. And it was everywhere. Whatever the perfect storm was that made civil rights, uh, anti-war movement, the music, the Woodstock, it then included all ages. And when people heard that and they sang that music together, it provided for them a moment where they weren't simply an audience, they were participants. Even if they go along with their daily lives. They can say, I'm a part of this, without being you know, a card-carrying member of some organization. Many of the speakers were people whose names were familiar, but you never would get a chance to see them. It wasn't just that they were sympathetic and very much involved in the ideals of the struggle. It was that that's who they really were. Uh, and they were artists, and they were superstars, and that you could be both powerfully receives force, and you can say the right thing. You can have a moral point of view. I've always resented people who said it was a picnic. It was a day of solidarity. And as a byproduct of that, they saw wonderful things. If you've traveled all night on a bus and you see Harry Belafonte, that's a nice thing. Or if you hear Bobby Dylan sing. But nobody got the same reaction that John Lewis got in his speech or that Dr. King got. I was aware that this was a time that John Lewis and Dr. King, they were coming into their own. As this is the first time most white people watching this on television had ever seen Dr. King give a full speech. So it was sort of breaking barriers to under, white people's understanding of the civil rights movement that could not have been done probably in any other way. Everybody's not equal. Everybody can't vote. You know, don't have the same shot at raising a family uh, with a future. I, I resolved at that moment I was going to be active. I was going to be a part of changing the country and uh, raising these demands and lifting my voice with, with people who uh, were doing everything they could. It was a procession of church. It was never ever a march. It was a congregation that uh, had, was answering the call. Not the speech in itself, but the gathering, that the speech was being given for the gathering. I, I couldn't believe it. You know, you know, I've been there for a whole week, and we worked in the office, we've done all these things, and now to see black, white, 
you know, Hispanic, you know, all religion, uh, being there, it was a it was a very touching moment for me. Us, in the end, the day was a complete win-win. Kennedy's heaved a huge sigh of relief that there was not one act of violence. And uh, to see at the end everybody singing, we shall overcome, and all the arms linked. We've said it often, but it's worth saying as often as necessary. There wasn't a dry eye in the house. <laughs>